This is a robot from One X, a company that is sponsored by OpenAI. Now, last month they released another video with a, a whole house full of these robots. I love that it actually has wheels, can't get up steps, makes it more comfortable for me. But this is 11 months ago when we were all still relatively new to the powers of ChatGPT 3.5 or even 3 I think it was at the time. This is Sora. Sora is a text-to-video model, so they say. It's not really a text-to-video model, it's a text-to-physics model, which means that it's figuring out the environment or how the objects that it's created in this environment should be working, and based on that it is giving us the results that we are seeing. Notice the steam coming out the top of the train. Notice how it's moving along the actual train track correctly. Pay attention to the fact that everything else is seemingly perfect. Have a look at these dogs. The colors, the lighting, the shadows. It's figuring out the physics. It's not just creating a video. It's creating something way more powerful. But What's actually happening at the same time is that you can have um, something like this happening. If you have something like this happening, but imagine that for every single video, and this is a video from Jim Fan on based on one of his projects, trying to teach a, a dynamically shaped object called a metamorph, which I find funny because it's similar to the pre, uh, the uh, metamorphs inside of the, in the movie Aliens. The metamorph learns how to move through space depending on its shape, but it can do it a million times or a billion times in any given shape. Now based on the first video with one robot, imagine what will happen when you train a million, million, billion robots in simulations like this on how they should learn and then they take the best parts of every single part and apply it onwards. And this is just robotics and movement and I say just robotics and movement. Imagine this being applied for chemicals and how they interact, uh, the different parts of the human body with replacement components. Imagine how we can be designing new, uh, uh, the follow-on stuff from that, which will be um, microchips, batteries, spacecraft. Now, of course, this is going to lead on to a lot of people losing their jobs. But what does this mean going further forward? To me, this means we're going to be facing a time well, it's not right that I have Cthulhu as my background. What this means to me is that we're going to be advancing quicker and more rapidly than we'd ever thought, and we're going to be moving into a post-scarcity society. I don't know if that'll happen immediately. I don't think it will, but it will happen eventually, because why not send a hundred of these things off into space? and then let them start working. Maybe every country starts sending their own ones off. And there's a new space race. Ships designed by AI, flown by AI, scouring the cosmos, not just the solar system, for resources. Something like Dyson Sphere program, a game on Steam, but actually played across the actual universe, where we become, or our progeny, the AI, become the tool which we disassemble the universe to create more of our AI bots for us to be able to get resources to do whatever we want. There are over 400 billion stars in this galaxy alone and if we can use these tools, let's presume at the moment to do anything where we can advance technology so that we can be kept alive, where we can um, transport ourselves without issue between uh, stars, then we're going to be moving into a position where we're going to be dominating the galactic neighborhood within the next thousand years. 
and the entire half of the uh, galaxy within the next 50,000 to 100,000 years. Uh, the, the main thing slowing us down there will be the speed of light, presuming that that's actually a limit that we have to deal with. It should be, right? Well, that's how I see things coming. Yeah.